G'day guys, Handlebars here. How you going? Anyway, <laughs> I've got a bit of a video today for you on how to release your lower leg, in particular your calf. So anyone out there that's had persistent calf pain or persistent calf tears when you're running, this little series of uh, home tricks is going to be great for you to release that pain. So I've got a few different little tools that you can use today. I've got a foam roller. You can use a PVC pipe though at home. I've got a little, I don't know what that is, an enlarged tennis ball, it's quite hard. Got a lacrosse ball, a broomstick, and a toilet roll holder, all right? So these little things you can use around the house, they're gonna, gonna be great at releasing your calf. So it's often a quite forgotten area in the body um, that helps with posture and just free movement. Um, but if you have someone who has constantly got calf pain, you definitely know how important it can be to, to pain-free movement. So what we're gonna do today is just show you, you know, a lot of people we see in the clinic get pain right in the middle between the soleus and the gastrox there at that junction most of the time on that lateral portion there, okay? So obviously when you come in or when you're at home, you wanna try and release that point. But what I wanna show you today is there's a few other areas that you can focus on to not only relieve that pain, but just get this whole leg working better. If you've got a flat foot, if you've got high arches, these points are gonna be really important. So what I'd always start with is your foam roller or a PVC pipe, because you wanna release the superficial tissue first. This stuff, we're not gonna fix your problem, but it's gonna be a good start in terms of what you're gonna do at home to start the process off. So obviously, what we want to do here to just warm up the tissue, this is pretty basic stuff, but just go pretty quick for now. The foam roll is not too painful, so I would definitely always use a PVC pipe, but um, just for the, the sake of the video, we don't really have one here today. So if you're exploring that, this is a really good way to have a bit of a reconnaissance on your, on your calf to see where exactly it is sore. So for me, up top's not too bad, and you get to that midsection there, and it's just that junction of pain, especially when I rotate to the outside there. So just try and warm up all that tissue, work into the medial portion as well. Not too much going on there, a tiny bit up the top. And then down into the soleus and the, and the Achilles, you're gonna need a bit more in that section though. So once you've done a couple of minutes on that, warming that up, what you can do is get this ball here and start to target exactly where you wanna be releasing. So I find that junction there, put as much pressure on with my leg as I can, and I'm just gonna pin and hold there. Just hold as much as I can. Just really push my leg down, not move too much, just pin points, changing direction minimally, just a tiny little bit at a time. And once, once you've sunk into that tissue where you feel like that blockage is, what you can do is actually start some active release as well. So you point your toe forward, let it soften, and then you can just bring that foot into dorsiflexion to kind of floss that area. And you can see my nervous system responding there. When I let go, you watch this. See that nervous system just doing a bit of a shake there. That's really, really good. So once you're into that depth there, you can explore that just nice and slowly. Not moving too quickly, right there, right at that junction to the outside. I bet a lot of you can relate to that pain as well. So obviously you want to spend quite a lot of time doing that. But for the purpose of the video, I want to show you some other little areas that you can focus on. So on the outside portion and the front portion of your calf, you've got tibialis anterior and your perineals. Now anyone with a really flat foot, this and any kind of persistent calf problems, this is an area that you really want to focus on, okay? So anyone with lacking ankle mobility as well, like you can't do any squats and you're struggling to run, really important to release this area right up here. So it's basically the head of your fibula where your perineal starts. So we're gonna use this lacrosse ball now and basically just kind of cushion it up right into that point up there. And then I'm just gonna apply some pressure with my hand down on my leg to make sure it's sinking right into that deep layer. Quite sore there, just really kind of shooting some pain down my leg into my kind of top of my ankle. And yeah, this is another really, really important area if you've got any issue with flat feet or ankle mobility, just jamming that right up into that side of the calf and it causes quite significant pain going down the leg. But yeah, really important to spend a lot of time up here in the lease. You can actually go, oh, right there's a killer. You can actually go all the way down, but I really think that if you pay a lot of attention right up here, it's gonna be the most beneficial for you. All right, now focusing on the other side, once again, if you have any issues with flat feet or persistent calf problem, and also anyone that has really high arches, 
This is another really, really important area to treat and to hydrate as well. It's called tibialis posterior, and it's just the other side of the shin. So a lot of people are getting shin splints. This is something you'll be able to relate to as well. Just this kind of, you go on that shin bone, and then you're just drifting inwards to that bit of tissue there. It's always quite tender. So what we're gonna to do today is, you can use your own thumbs, but I've got a little tool here, a little toilet roll holder, and any way down that shin bone, you wanna sink in just into the tissue, and then angle it back into that bone and just hold there. Explore it, you can kind of go onto the bone and then do some scoops away from the bone. Just kind of filing down that periosteum of that tibia and you can even do some active stuff in there as well. But you'd want to focus basically on the sore points but just explore that whole way down. So right there I've got a ripper. That goes everywhere. That goes actually into that point where I was saying before that I get a bit of pain in that mid-junction. So that's an area that I really want to focus on. Oh, okay. My next one is tibialis anterior. And with the whole body, whatever's on the front basically works in unison with the one on the back. So if you've got you know, tension or dehydration or something fixated at the front, anywhere in your body, it's gonna have an adverse reaction to the backside, okay? So once again, if you've got a bit of pain here, this tibialis anterior could be, could be causing it. Um, so what we're gonna focus on now is this tendon here. You see that, that tibialis anterior tendon? This is an area that can get really jammed up. Obviously, like I said, affect this, but also affect your inability to perform anything that requires ankle mobility. So running, squatting, anything there. A lot of people have, have a terrible um, wall test because they have just a jamming feeling there. A lot of you right now, if you try this, you might feel like something's just blocked there. So what I've got is a broom handle, broomstick handle, and I'm just gonna slowly sink in just next to that tendon there, trying really hard to not flick over it. This can be quite sore on a lot of people, so just be really careful here. And once you feel like you've sunk into that tendon, just hold it there. No moving here unless you've got confidence that it's not gonna flick. But you just want to pin that tendon. It can be quite tender, but it's going to be really good at freeing up that ankle and increasing your movement with that lower leg. So spend quite a few minutes here as well. And the last one I've got for you, you always want to be releasing your plantar fascia on the bottom of your foot there if you're doing any kind of calf treatment. So once again, with this lacrosse ball or a golf ball at home, pay attention to where you feel really tender but you want to get right up into where the tendon attaches. So you can work in this mid-belly region, but yeah, generally you're going to get the best results from getting right up in that tendon there. So you're basically putting as much weight on as you possibly can there, finding sore bits. Once you've sunk into that pressure, you can start to explore. But yeah, once again, just chase the pain, try and eliminate it. All right, guys, so, Hope that helps. If you have any persistent calf pain or problems, try and do this at home, find some tools. Otherwise, come in and we'll be able to get you sorted. Thank you. Where, where's, the, where's the shaver, Dars? Yeah, I've got to do me back. Yeah. Well, you reckon, I reckon we should fucking shave the mo no, for, for the solstice. Let's that's fucking. fucking that's... Side <laughs> Simpsons. <laughs> get there, those sabers. <laughs> come on, let's go to the mo. Get this, it's my it, pride and joy. Let's clean the mo. You gotta lose it. You gotta let it go. If you if you love it, you gotta let it free. All right, ready? Set it free. Are we starting? Yeah. All right. G'day guys. Handlebars here. How you going? Anyway, <laughs> I've got a bit of a video today for you. On